A lot of students have trouble visualizing or picturizing how the Euclid's division, division lemma actually works. So let's try to draw a picture to better understand this division lemma. Before that, we will write it, write down the division lemma and see if we can make some sense out of it. So a is equal to qb plus r. It tells us that for any two integers a and b such that b is not equal to 0, I can always find two numbers q and r where q is an integer and r is always between b and 0. Of course, r can also be 0. Okay, so I, that's what Euclid's division lemma tells me that I would always be able to find a quotient and remainder for any two numbers and the remainder would always satisfy this property. So it is a very strong statement that such a remainder would always exist. Let's take an example to understand why such a remainder always exists. Let's just look at the division process and see if we can understand why our remainder would always exist. So here I'm drawing two numbers. One is my a, which is of course the dividend and let's take it to be 8. And the second one is my divisor or b and let's take it to be equal to 3. So these are my two numbers. I'm trying to divide 8 by 3. So what, what would I do? I'm trying to remove as many 3's as possible from this number 8. That is my entire of, that is the process of division. So first I remove one 3, then I remove another 3. After I remove the first 3, okay, so the first 3 is gone, I'm left with 5. So this is the 5 remaining. And as soon as you look at 5, you say that, oh, there is one more 3 inside it, so probably I can remove that also. So I remove the second 3. And now I'm left with just this, which is 2. So I'm left with just 2. So in this 2, from this 2, I cannot take any more 3. So the process of division stops here. And of course, because we are stopping the process of division, I cannot remove any more 3's from this 2. This remainder, this 2, has to be less than b. Okay, so from the very nature of the division process, we always, we understand that we should be able to obtain a remainder which is less than b. In the case of natural numbers, like you are seeing, it is pretty obvious that this remainder would exist. In the case of integers, it's not so trivial. But let's just write down two inequalities which would help us focus on negative numbers as well. So if you look at it, what we have done here is that our quotient came out to be 2. Okay, so that is our quotient 1 and 2. So that is q is equal to 2. And our remainder, of course, came out to be also 2. Okay, that's a, that's a different thing. Let's not look at the remainder now. Let's just focus on this quotient first. So what is quotient into b? Quotient into b is qb, which is equal to 2 into 3, which is equal to 6. Okay, that, that is what it is in this case. If you look at it, this qb is always taken as high as possible. So we increase our quotient. Okay, we take, we start from 1, we go to 2, we go to 3. We increase our q, okay, 1 by 1 until our qb becomes maximum possible so that qb is less than a. Okay, so qb is increasing, but we don't increase it so much that it becomes bigger than a. It has to be less than a. So here I take my q, I start from 1, then I take it to 2, and then I stop because the next q, if I did q plus 1 into b, it would be 3 into 3, which is equal to 9. So that would of course be bigger than my a which is 8. So I don't do this. I don't, I stop. I stop right here. I, st I take the largest possible value of qb which would be less than a. By the very extension, the very next value of q would take us above a. So these are the two important inequalities which would allow us to to sort of <laughs> work with negative integers, okay? With negative integers, a little bit complicated, but of course, they're not insurmountable, just like any other problem, they're also surmountable. So now let's take an example of negative integer. Here, let's say that my a is equal to minus 10. I can take a to be whatever I want, okay? I can take a, I can even take it negative. There are no restrictions on the value of a. We said that it could be integer, it could be any integer. And I keep my b to be the same, I keep, keep my b to be equal to three. Now I have to choose a value of q, such that qb is less than a, okay, so the qb should come out to be less than a in negative terms, okay. So I choose a value of q and at the same time q plus 1 into b, okay, q plus 1 into b should come out to be greater than a. So both of these should hold. So I take a value of q equal to minus 4. Okay, let's see what happens with this value. Okay, I will try various values, just like we did in this division. Okay, in this division also, in positive we tried, we started from 1, 2, 3. Similarly, here also I will start from, but I will try various values and I just say that I chose the value of q equal to my. You'll see that it's a fortunate value choice, but again, we'll choose a value of minus 4 and see what happens. For value of minus 4, qb comes out to be, qb comes out to be minus 12. 
and this minus 12 is of course less than minus 10 in negative terms sorry minus 10 in negative terms right so in neg so this is more negative so of course it is smaller what what is the value of q plus 1 be this comes out to be minus 4 plus 1 okay so q plus 1 is minus 4 plus 1 which is minus 3 so this becomes minus 3 into of course b is 3 still so this becomes minus 9 and now my minus 9 is nothing but bigger than minus 10 because we are looking at negative numbers so minus 9 is towards the 0 so it is bigger than minus 10 so at this point i can say that both my inequalities this and this are satisfied and therefore the value of q that i need to choose is equal to minus 4 so we proceed with that value of q and now we find the remainder r r is nothing but a minus qb okay that has always been the case here also the r is nothing but a minus qb so a is 8 minus 6 which is equal to 2 right so r is nothing but a minus qb that is the case here also so here a is of course about minus 10 minus qb is minus will remain here and qb is of course negative we said that it is minus 12 so this comes out to be minus 12 and so our answer becomes minus 10 plus 12 which is equal to plus 2. So like we said that even in case of negative numbers we can arrive at a positive remainder if we choose the value of q properly. Another change which we need to do if we are choosing b to be negative okay b can be negative also is that we put an absolute value sign here indicating clearly that our remainder is always always has to be positive. Hope this helps in visualizing division lemma. If not if you have still have doubts don't hesitate to put them in comment section below. Thank you.